Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vasily Grignol. I am associate professor of the Department of Genetics at the Faculty of Biology of Belarusian State University. Today, we will talk about high throughput technologies, which are widely used in solving various fundamental and applied problems of modern genetics. In fact, high throughput technologies are a group of high performance experimental methods that allow simultaneously detecting with a high accuracy and at an affordable price a huge number of different molecules in the biological sample of interest. Each high performance method is designed to detect a specific type of biological molecules, which as a whole uh, can belong to different classes, from DNA or RNA to proteins and cellular metabolites uh, of not protein nature. In the frame of the current lecture, we will limit our interest to only two technologies, microarrays and high throughput sequencing. These technologies were developed in the mid-1990s and the 2000s, and according to the citation in the PubMed literature database, they remain the most popular high throughput methods in modern genetic research. Each of these methods uh, has its advantages and disadvantages and they are not interchangeable, but more often complement each other. Microarray and high throughput sequencing methods process either DNA or RNA as an input material. Here is, we can use all DNA or RNA present in a biological sample or in a single living cell. This type of input material we call total cellular RNA or RNA. Alternatively, we can analyze only part of this genetic material, for example, RNA that was obtained from a particular cell compartment. In that case, we call this type of input genetic material uh, as fractioned DNA or RNA. In general, the choice of input material largely depends uh, on the purpose of the study and may affect the post-processing of data. Now we turn to a more detailed consideration of microarrays. Microarray technique was first proposed in 1995. Uh, simply define it, a microarray is a collection of microscopic features which can be probed with target molecules to produce either quantitative or qualitative data. Also, other types of microarrays exist, uh, such as protein, peptide, carbohydrate, or drug microarrays. This lecture will focus on DNA microarrays only. DNA microarrays is one of the most popular techniques in simultaneous or multiplex detection of thousands and thousands and millions of nucleic acid molecules. At present, uh, the use of this method is not limited to only uh, basic research, uh, but it's widely used uh, in the clinic, pharmacology, uh, toxicology, and some other areas. The basic experimental design of the microarray analysis includes four main steps. The first step includes the formulation of the biological questions to be answered, and the hypothesis. At this step, we must also clearly define the purpose uh, and objectives of the, slide, of the study. At the second step, based on the purpose and objectives of the study, we need to decide on the type of input genetic material. This step also includes purification, uh, quality analysis, and labeling of the input genetic material to obtain a reliable result. It's necessary to involve in the study, if possible, of course, uh, at least three independent samples of the same biological material, which are called biological replicates. Uh, the third step consists of, first, choosing a microarray platform, second, carrying out the microarray experiment itself, and third, evaluation of the quality of the raw image obtained. It should be noted 
that the choice of a microarray platform is mainly determined by the purpose and objectives of the study. In addition, with the low quality of the image obtained, the microarray experiment should be corrected and repeated. And finally, the step 4 includes data analysis, uh, data validation uh, by independent experiment methods if it's necessary and if it's possible, and data interpretation from biological point of view. Let me consider some critical steps of microanalysis in more details. To simplify the story, we confine ourselves to a microanalysis where RNA is used as an input genetic material. After extraction or purification from the cells, the purified RNA is used in a specific enzymatic reaction where the synthesis of the so-called first strand of cDNA occurs. cDNA means DNA that is complementary to the nucleotide sequence and the RNA molecule. During this reaction, fluorescent labeled nucleotides are incorporated in the cDNA chain. The labeled cDNA is unlayered on the DNA chip, where it specifically interacts with uh, its glass surface. The specific interaction of the labeled cDNA with the glass surface of the DNA chip is called hybridization. After washing away of unhybridized cDNA molecules, the chip surface is scanned using microarray scanner. The scanner detects the glow of fluorescent labels embedded in the cDNA and forms the primary image of the glass surface of the DNA chip. The primary image is an object of further analysis carried out by specific software. In the microarray technology is the organization of the surface of DNA chip. In general, a DNA chip is a small glass plate with printed technical information. For example, uh, chip name, QR code uh, for automatic recognition of the chip by the scanner. Uh, and uh, most importantly and most interesting, a hybridization array. Each hybridization array contains millions of so-called probe cells. You may see here this hybridization uh, array. Uh, for instance, a Femetix gene chip cartridge array includes 6.5 million probe cells at physical size 1.28 cm per 1.28 cm. Each probe cell holds about 400 copies of immobilized or physically attached to the surface uh, specific probes. Each probe is a short link nucleotide consisting of 25 nucleotides. There are two different types of probes fully complementary to the nucleotide sequence of interest. And second one uh, is not complementary to any specific sequence. The first uh, type of probe uh, is called uh, perfect um, matched probe. And uh, second one is mismatched probe. The 11 pairs of different perfect match and mismatch probes form a probe set for detecting one variant of the molecule uh, nucleotide sequence of interest. A gene can have multiple probe sets because of expression of different RNA isoforms. As a result, for instance, Affymetic's human genome U133 plus 2 naught array contains 54,000 probe sets or about 1.6 uh, million probes. As noted, the primary result of the microanalysis is image of hybridization array. This image consists of a set of spots, one for each probe cell, and stored in a date format. Each spot is characterized by fluorescence intensity. In general, the more molecules of labeled cDNA are bound to the probe cell because, for example, the gene is highly expressed and there are very many, many corresponding RNA molecules in the biological sample, the more intensely it will fluoresce. It means, if be precisely, that the date file contains P0 
pixel intensity values collected from an ephematic scanner. However, the date format has some drawbacks with respect to data dissemination and subsequent processing. In this regards, the cell format uh, is more useful because the cell file stores the results of the intensity calculations and the pixel values of the date file. Data in the cell format can be direct directly processed to obtain final analysis results. When using DNA Affymetics chips and Affymetics software for processing cell files, auxiliary data is usually needed. These auxiliary data are stored in a CDF file that describes the layout for the Affymetics array. Finally, using the, this auxiliary data, the cell file is converted uh, to a file of CHP format. Uh, that contains prop set analysis results generated from the Affymetic software. So, we discussed all critical steps in marker analysis, from development of experimental design uh, to data formats and storage. Uh, these data are subject to subsequent post-processing, uh, including background correction, normalization, scoring and summation. And final results can be used for various fundamental and applied purposes. Uh, assessment of the gene expression levels is a predominant application of DNA microarrays. Microarrays are also widely used in diagnostic and outcome prognosis of uh, different diseases, uh, such as heart disease, uh, mental illness, infectious disease, and cancer. The technology of microarrays has become popular in pharmaco pharmacology and pharmacogenomics, uh, especially for drug discovery. Microarray technology provides a robust platform for toxicogenomic studies of correlation between response to toxicant and the change in the genetic profiles of the cells exposed to such toxicant. And uh, finally, uh, microarray are widely used in detection of clinically significant short genetics uh, variation uh, in the human genome. Such widespread use of microarrays in fundamental and applied research is associated with a number of advantages that this technology possesses. In particular, one microarray experiment instead of money provides quick and easy access to data and thousands and thousands of genes. At the same time, this technology has some drawbacks. These shortcomings can be divided into several classes. For example, microarray technology is still expensive, which limits its uh, availability. Another problem is the quality of the data, which may be low due to high data variability or, for instance, limited quality of probes. Finally, we have limited opportunities for independent verification of the results of microarrays and the difficulties in interpreting these results from a biological point of view. Another popular approach in genetics is a high throughput sequencing or next generation sequencing, or simply NGS. This approach uh, was introduced in 2005 and now it's more in demand than microarray technology. The high throughput methods uh, have markedly increased the amount of sequencing data produced per instrument and have dramatically decreased the costs of generating sequencing data. Let's take a closer look at the experimental design of NGS uh, based analysis using the RNA-seq method uh, as an example. RNA-seq method is designed to reading RNA molecules uh, present in a biological sample and to estimate their quantity. As you see, the first two steps of experimental design of RNA-seq method, as well as any another NGS method, uh, are very similar to marker analysis. There are significant differences in step 3 and also, I would say, in part, in the subsequent data pre- and post-processing. After collection and purification, RNA is subjected to random fragmentation 
by enzymatic digestion or ultrasonic treatment. Uh, at this step, a set of RNA fragments of different size is created. Fragmentation uh, of RNA is necessary for technological reasons, uh, since only small fragments of nucleic acids can be used in the reading step. Collected, purified it, and fragmented RNA is converted to first-strand cDNA using enzyme reverse transcriptase and special short oligonucleotides called random primers. The attachment or hybridization of random primers to RNA fragments is called random priming and the cDNA synthesis reaction is called reverse transcription. Next, the second strand is synthesized, which turns cDNA into a double-stranded molecule. Extranucleotides A and chemical pieces called phosphate groups are then added to this molecule. These chemical modifications allow the attachment or ligation of the pre-designed RNA molecules called adapters to both ends of the cDNA. The resulting cDNA molecule is repeatedly copied by a polymerase chain reaction called PCI amplification. After this step, we have many and many double-stranded cDNA molecules called RNA-seq library that are completely ready for reading. Reading or sequencing. The nucleotide sequence in a DNA molecule is next critical step in NGS technology. There are different approaches uh, to this and sequencing by synthesis is the most popular. To do that, the RNA-seq library is loaded into a special cuvette called the flow cell. And the cDNA molecules, called also the templates, bind to the solid surface of this cell. Here we must to note that the term flow cell should not be confused with the biological concept of living cell. It's, it's not the same. Following this, a solid phase, bridge amplification, PCR process creates approximately 1 million copies of each template in tight physical clusters on the flow cell surface. Typically, about 1.6 billion clusters form on the surface of one flow cell. Surface bound and amplified templates are sequenced in cycles by a synthesis process, in which blocked fluorescence nucleotides are incorporated and then imaged. A blocked, for instance, nucleotide is a modified nucleotide containing a terminator which blocks phase polymerization. Only a single variant of fluorescence color uh, is used for labeling of each type of nucleotide. So each of the four nucleotides must be added in a separate cycle of DNA synthesis. Following the addition of the four, all four nucleotides to the template, the image says is recorded and the terminators are removed. After the block is removed, the next set of nucleotides can be incorporated and a new cycle starts. The sequencing reaction is conducted simultaneously on a very large number of different template molecules spread out on a solid surface. The images are analyzed and the colored spots are translated into nucleotide sequences, called reads. Since single nucleotides are added to all templates in a uniform fashion, the sequencing process produces a set of DNA sequence reads of uniform length. The maximum length is 300 nucleotides per single read. While the sequencer is running, the primary data uh, is writing to the BCL files. These files store nucleotide calls and uh, respective quality scores. Quality score is a measure of the quality of the identification of the nucleotide during DNA sequencing. When a sequencing process is completely finished, the data contained in the BCL files is processed. Uh, for example, files of FastQ format are generated on their basis. FastQ format is a text-based format for storing both a nucleotide sequence and its corresponding quality scores. Each entry of file in FastQ format consists of four lines. First line is sequence identifier or sequence recorder header, always starts since sign at. 
Second line is sequence itself. Uh, third line is a separator of sequence line and quality line. Uh, this line always starts in sign plus and optionally, not always, uh, includes a repeated sequence identifier. And uh, last line uh, is quality scores. Both the sequence letter and quality score are each encoded with a single ASCII character for brevity. Uh, it was originally developed at the Wellcome Trust Senge Institute uh, to bundle a fast A sequence and its quality data, but has recently uh, become the de facto standard for storing uh, the output of high uh, throughput sequencing instruments. NGS raw data stored in FASTQ file are a subject of post-processing and uh, final results can be used for various fundamental and applied purposes. Like microarray technology, assessment of the gene expression levels is a predominant application of NGS. NGS-based approaches are also widely used in medical diagnostics, drug and biomarker discovery, microbial genetics, agriculture investigation, uh, animal research, forensic medicine, uh, food safety, phylogeographic and phylogenetic studies. Like microarrays, widespread use of NGS in fundamental and applied research is associated with a number of advantages that this technology possesses. In particular, NGS provides relatively fast sequencing of whole individual genomes, including non-annotated genomes. Qualitative and quantitative expression data for whole transcriptome, exploring of whole epigenomes and huge opportunities in diagnostic and discovering cures for diseases. At the same time, this technology has some drawbacks. Like with microarrays, these shortcomings can be divided into several classes. For example, NGS is still expensive, which limits its availability. Moreover, the length of sequenced fragments is short. There are biases result resulting from library amplification step. And there are no reliable approaches for the novel assembly of genomes and transcriptomes. And finally, we have limited opportunities for identification, for uh, independent verification of the results of NGS, and there are many challenges in analysis of complex results because uh, many genomes uh, are non-annotated and uh, function of uh, many genes are not uh, understood clearly. So, we discussed the main steps of the two most popular high throughput technologies, microarrays and NGS, of modern genetics and molecular biology. Our discussion was limited to the conceptual level and, of course, many and many details uh, were not considered. All additional information uh, you can find easy in various publications, which are mostly freely available. I wish you success in this matter. Good luck!